What's up guys, GT here and wish you guys a very happy new year and welcome back to another episode of Tone Quest. In today's episode, we'll be dialing in the amazing tone from Santana's blissful track, Europa. So let's dive in and dial it. Now before we begin, a couple of quick shout outs to Romain Junior, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, and James McCall for making a contribution towards the channel via a donation to my PayPal. So thank you so much for that guys. And in case you're enjoying the presets and the videos and you want to support the channel too, check the description box of the video for more details as to how you can support the presets and me as well. All right, first things first, the background and the research. Now, when you search anything related to Santana's tone, you will probably land up with Mesa Boogie as the first answer. But of course, there's always more to the tone than just the amp. And I think we all know that, right? So as always, I began to look for clues in the form of articles and videos which would cover more about his tone and gear. My first reference and probably the most important one is the rig rundown video from Premier Guitar, where you can hear Santana's tech talking through all the gear that Santana uses. Seriously, how helpful are these videos? They're extremely informative and they've really helped me at least dial in some of these tones. So thank you so much Premier Guitar for making them. Now, there's lots and lots of good information out there in the video and I highly recommend you go and check the entire video out. I'll link it in the description box below. But for this video, I'll just outline a few key important points that I found very interesting from the video. First and foremost, I feel that there's a fair amount of compression on this tone as the pickups during that era weren't really that hot and it probably helped Santana to push the amp even further for more sustain. Now second, the amps. Santana has been known to use primarily the Mesa Boogie snake skin for most of his career as his primary amp, which is equipped here with a single Altec speaker as shown in the video. But he also blends in the tone from other amps such as Pluto Tone amps and Dumbbell amps to be specific. In terms of caps, as covered in the video, he uses 4x12 PRS cabinets for his tone, some of which have a mixed speaker setup of V30s and G1265 speakers, which give him that fat, thick and dark sort of a tone which we are after. Now, I do hear some chorus being used here. And the last thing that I want to call out from the tone is that I do hear him using a war pedal towards the final solo of the song. And honestly, I think I hear a tremolo as well being used in the clean sections of the song as well. Now, another thing to note is that Santana has been known to play really, really loud and use strategic stage placements for himself to get the huge sustain and feedback that you hear in the songs. Now, that's something that it isn't easy to reproduce in a small home studio setup like mine, so you'll have to pardon me on that one. <laughs> now, of course, I do not have or possibly cannot have the same guitar or gear as Santana has, and the pickups on my guitar here are really, really hot and really, really modern. This is a JP15 guitar, in case you don't know. Plus, we do not have the Mesa Boogie Snakeskin amp in the XFX2, but we do have the Blue Tone amps in there. So what did I use? Let's jump in and find it out. All right, guys, I've got Axe Edit loaded in front of me. And as always, I've got a blank preset with nothing in there so that you guys can hear the DI signal of my guitar and adjust your levels accordingly. I am playing my Music Man JP15. I'm on the neck pickup. Everything's at full. This is how you're sounding. All right, nothing very inspiring in terms of tone, but we shall make it inspiring as always. We're gonna dial in block by block. We've got three scenes to cover, so a lot of things to do. So let's dive in right away and start with the first block. Now, as I mentioned in my first section, I'd like to use a compressor in the start of the signal chain. Not that this guitar needs it, but I wanna be era specific and it does bring out some amount of the top end from the amp as well, to be honest. So what I did use was actually a uh, pedal comp here and what I did was actually bring down the compression down to three I didn't use too much compression to be honest 
and I also brought down the attack to one millisecond as I want the compressor to immediately kind of kick in. Now this is gonna help and push the amp a little bit as well. So let's go ahead and do the amp next. Now for the amp, this is where the tricky part happened for me. Now I tried a lot of the Mesa Boogie amps in the Axe FX2 and we don't have the Mesa Boogie snakeskin amp in there, which is used by Santana. But I tried the other Mesa Boogie amps and none of them, to be honest, gave me that thick, fat and you know dark sort of a sound that I was looking for. But but I tried a couple of other amps with my Santana users, specifically the Bluto Tone amp, which gave, gave me the sort of tone I was looking for and it kind of brought me close to the tone that we want. So we have a couple of Bluto Tone amps in there uh, in the AxeFX2, so we're gonna use that one as our primary amp. So I chose this one over here, which is a Bluto Jai LDPAB. Now you may ask, what is a Bluto Jai? It is a Bluto Tone Ojai, which is actually a uh, copy, exact copy of a Dumble overdriven amp which was used by Robin Ford. You can check out the forums for more details about this one or check out the X Guide. A uh, very interesting amp to use and it really gives us that thick sort of a fat tone which we are after. Now, before I change anything in the amp, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the cab as well. Now, cab is another thing that I mentioned in the first part of this video. Did you miss it? Would be great if you could go ahead and check it out to be honest so uh, santana's tech does mention that he uses is a pair of g1265 speakers along with uh p30 speakers in the prs cabinets which are present on stage now we don't have the prs cabinets here in the axe fx2 but and we don't have that exact g1265 speakers uh cabinet to be honest as well but i found one ir in there in the stock cabs which kind of has that same speaker which is the g1265 and i'm going to go ahead and use that which is f029 which is a 2x12 g1265 far field now i'm not going to go much deep details into this uh, cab but what worked out really well is that it has the same speaker that I'm looking for now before I you know dial in any of the settings we are absolutely at stock let's hear how it is sounding I am on the neck pickup volumes kind of 50% or maybe 60% let's hear how the intro sounds <laughs> Now, right off the bat, you can you know hear the thickness and the fatness that the stock settings even are providing to us, and that is the reason this amp really, really works really well for me. Okay, enough rambling. Let's go ahead and modify the settings in the amp and bring it you know more closer to the kind of tone we want. It's obviously not having that top end that I want in there, so. The trick with this amp is that you wanna keep your input drive low. Otherwise, if you keep it above five, it kind of turns towards a more bass and lower mid sort of oriented tone. Whereas if you keep it between 1.5 and three or five, I think, you kind of get that upper mid sort of a chime in there, which is really, really good. It's very subtle. I would recommend you hear a through a headphones and kind of understand what I'm talking about. So input drive is gonna come down to 1.35. Overdrive, I'm gonna push it to around six. We need a little bit of more drive and sustain. Bass, I'm gonna bring it down to around three. Uh, mid, I'm gonna push up quite a lot, 8.55, I think, because we want it to be very, very thick and fat. Uh, treble, I'm gonna push it to around 7.5 or 7.57, to be honest. Let's use exact numbers what I used and the presence, I'm gonna push it up all the way and master volume also, I'm gonna push it up all the way. Now I'm gonna to touch the level of the amp a little bit later, but the other thing I did is I switched off the bright switch and I turned on the fat switch because we want it to be fat, of course. One small final change that I made is also went into the dynamic section and added a lot of dynamic presence. This gives that extra bite that you want when you're picking hard. It brings out that upper top end, to be honest, which I really, really want. So I'm gonna add a fair amount of dynamic presence around 2.8, which makes it you know really, really chimey when you you know, play really hard. For the cab, I'm gonna use a 87A condenser mic. I couldn't really make out what exact mic they were using in the video, but I think it's kind of a condenser mic, so I kind of used that one. I think this one gave me the closest sound. This is purely by ear. Uh, low cut, I pushed it up to around 80 hertz. High cut, I brought it down to 67, 70 hertz, which, because we don't want too much top end coming from here. 
Uh, also, I pushed the proximity of this particular amp to around 3.4, which is good enough proximity. What does the proximity do? It brings the mic closer to the amp. Naturally, you're gonna get more fatness and more bass out of your tone. So I also went into the room and added some air. So use headphones while dialing in air always, I recommend because the change is really subtle, but you will hear uh, based on the frequency and the amount of air you add, you will hear the fizziness uh, of that 80s sort of tone coming to life. So really, really good place to add in some fizziness if you want to add in there to your tone um, and some fuzz as well to be honest so air frequency i used it around 13,800. Um, i think those are the only settings i made to the amp and to the cap with that done this is how we're sounding again i'm not going to play at full volume lower volume uh actually i roll off the tone as well a little bit for the intro of the song because i have learned that this is something that santana also does Now it's again having that fatness and thickness but then later I found out that it, it's kind of missing a little bit of the top end so we're going to fix that in a bit but before that I added the chorus in there it smoothens the tone a little bit and adds some character to the tone as well so we're going to use a bit of chorus which chorus did I use I used a vintage tape to give it that classic sort of a feel rate I always try to bring it down as low as I can so that I don't get too many repeats happening in there uh, tempo is 74 BPM we're gonna not use the tempo here we're gonna keep it at sign because we want it smooth mix I'm gonna bring it down to 35 percent um, which is fair amount of chorus and also in the tone I went and pushed the high cut all the way up and dimension mode I turned it to high next I added some EQ because what I usually do is when I find a good amp setting that works for me I usually use a GEQ to kind of tweak things a little bit further rather than go into the amp and start changing all things all over again and you know end up messing up the whole preset to be honest so I usually use a GEQ and what I did in this case is only use uh, the GEQ to push a little bit of the top end as I mentioned which is going to be the 4k frequency I pushed it up to around 3.85 which is a uh, decent amount of boost in the 4k section now you could use a peq as well over here if you want to but i used a geq it makes more sense to me to be honest easier to control um, after that i added some delay now santana as i mentioned doesn't use too much delay to be honest and uh, there is some delay being shown in the rig rundown video but it's only used for a particular track where is delay here is delay <laughs> we're going to use a stereo tape and I'm gonna bring the tempo to one fourth, uh, ratio 100%, 20% feedback, uh, mix, I think I brought it down quite a bit to around 11% or maybe even 10%, you can go low as that. I always bring the EQ down in the, you can use a ducking delay as well, but for me, I always do this trick of cutting the high cut so that the repeats don't interfere too much with the playing. And one final thing I added is the reverb. Now, reverb is a huge part of Santana Stone as, as far as I can hear. Uh, he tends to use good amount of reverb. He prefers reverb, I think, over delay, but I could be wrong. But, uh, you know, when it comes to reverb, I think a plate reverb really works well for that 80s sort of a tone. I think this song is even older than that, but I think the 80s kind of classic rock uh, reverb uh, random plate really works well, but I did not use that one. I used a large plate and I changed the quality to high and I think I pushed the mix up to around 35%. Now, I think that's pretty much all the changes that I made for this particular preset. Let's hear how this is sounding. So let's play the some other part now. That 
sounds really really sweet to my ears and it sounds really fat and really thick just the way we want it so that's pretty much i would say you could call the main preset but i took it one step further as i really wanted to kind of try out the setup that he uses which is a blend of a couple of amps now i tried the mesa boogie amps also in this case now ax8 users uh, you probably will not be able to use a second amp so sorry about that but yeah you can still go ahead and use this as a good enough setup but i added an out another amp in there which is going to be of the type mesa boogie and i added a cab as well which i'm going to talk about in a second for the amp now i chose a tx star lead which is one of the oldest uh mesa boogie amps there in the xfx2 and i tweaked it uh, a little bit so that it gives me a little bit of more uh you know top end and higher upper mids to be honest uh, that's how i kind of like kind of dialed it in so for this one i chose an input drive of 1.8 overdrive I kept it at 5 base i kind of brought it down a little bit to 3.5 mids again pushed it up to 7 as we want it to be fat and uh, travel i kept it at 5 itself now this is not going to drastically change the tone but it's going to give us a good blend of the two amps that we want to be honest uh master volume i kept it around seven otherwise it gets too uh muddy if you keep it to 10 presence i think i kept it at stock uh level as you've added another layer it's gonna probably have some peaking so i not 140 minus 14 db and let's connect the dots which is, i should have done earlier i'm gonna connect it back into the signal chain and for the cab i actually now if you uh here the video I actually used something similar about what was shown in the video now for the Mesa Boogie amp that he uses he uses a single Alnico speaker which we don't have in the XFX but we have another one which is a stock uh, stock IR which is of that same type it has the same speaker which is uh which speaker is that let me recollect it's a 4178H is what the speaker is I'm going to use this one. It's a 2x12 cab. It's a half open cab, but it should do the trick for us. Mic again, I'm going to use an 87A condenser mic here. Low cut, 80 hertz. High cut, pushed up a little bit in this case, 12,000. And I think we need to adjust the level of this amp as well because we're going to have peaking because of the extra layer. So minus 14.2 is what we did. And now here the intro again. Volume is not all the way full and I am tone is kind of half 50%. That sounds really beautiful and that's that's actually a really nice tone to my ears to be honest i don't know about you guys let me know in the comments what do you guys think and by the way if you guys are enjoying the video a sub to the channel would be really really helpful and if you could like the video as well while you're down there really appreciate that thank you so much all right scene two is going to be the clean tone that i used on this actual preset let's save this for a second let's go to scene two there's a couple of parts in the track where he plays a clean tone now for the clean tone i obviously did not use uh, both the amps i switched off the mesa boogie amp for the first amp i did not use the lead amp here i used the blue to joy clean amp so i'm going to change it to the y mode of the amp so you can use two different amps in the same preset I'm gonna go ahead and change this amp to Blue to Jai Clean. Now with this amp, if you read about it on the forums, you'll find a couple of tricks as well. Thanks to Yek for making all those tricks documented. It's really, really helpful. So for this one, what you're gonna do is bring down the input drive between 0.5 and 1. You want it there, otherwise it gets, you know, kind of breaking up and my guitar is already pretty hot. You've heard me talking about that a couple of times. So I dialed it to around 0.8. So you want to keep the input drive around there and uh, base let's just touch upon these settings for a second a base i kept it around eight mids i also pushed it to 8.1 treble i think i pushed a little bit 6.25 switch on the fat switch and master volume again is something which you want to be careful about you want to keep it below four uh, below five to be honest otherwise as i said it gets too muddy and 
the you'll start getting edge of breakup in your tone which you don't want um presence i kept it around 3.7 couple of handy notes there on the forum you should check out about this amp level level i'm going to push up quite a bit because obviously now you have uh very low input drives obviously you will need a lot of more levels so i'm going to push it up to around 2.5 db and change this according to you i was getting clipping if i pushed it even further but you know i pushed it a little bit more in the playthrough video actually so i'm going to keep it there i turn on the fat switch the other thing that you want to do is go into the preamp section and change the tone stack type to skyline this is another trick that i learned from the forums that i mentioned and to increase a bit of touch responsiveness of the actual amp you want to go into the preamp dynamics dynamic section and change the preamp dynamics to around 0.5 or 1 to be honest this gives a better touch response as well to the preset now other things i did not use at all i did not use delay geq chorus in this case i only use the reverb and also i hear some tremolo happening when he's playing the clean tone parts so for that i used a trem pan here in the start of the signal chain after the compressor to be honest uh, rate I set it to 116th trip I think and LFO type I changed it to sine and then what I did is I think brought down the depth to around 45% and that's going to give us a fair amount of tremolo in the tone when we're going to hear it uh, when I play something which is right now. Let's play the clean part. Now you can hear the tremolo, it's in there, but if I play an open chord, you'll probably hear it better. So let's play an open chord. So that's pretty much the clean tone that I used in there. Now we've got another final preset uh, scene to cover, which is scene three, which is the war tone that I was talking about. So let's save the preset. Let's go to scene three. Obviously, we don't need a trim pan in there. Uh, we're going to use a wah. So what did I use for a wah? Hmm. Most of you pretty much know that I don't have an expression pedal with me. I use pretty much the, the XFX unit itself. So I had to use some sort of automation to dial in the wah. So how I did that, I'm going to show you. What I chose is an FAS standard. The taper I changed to linear. Uh, frequency min, I brought it down to 120 hertz. And this is all by ear, nothing very fancy going on here. You can dial it differently if you want to. And for the control, now you want it to be automated and you want it to be changing by itself when you're playing. So you can right click on this icon in the center over there and change the source to LFO1A. What that's gonna do is bring up that oscillation happening. You can see that in the graph over here. I changed the start to around 45% and what i did not i think change anything so it's going to give us that curve which is going to change and trigger the war automatically it's not going to be as good as a pedal war but obviously it's going to be something at least right so this is what i used in the final solo and this is how it sounds i think he plays it on the uh bridge pickup so let's switch to that play the actual parts of the song because i did that last year <laughs> and just just kidding it's just been a few days since i did that but anyways it's always fun to play something else and show you how it sounds so that's pretty much it guys what do you guys think would you change anything or dial in something differently let me know in the comment section below i'm always open to your suggestions and feedback and in fact it's primarily the driving force for making more of these videos and these presets so please pour your heart out let me know as always, thank you for your support and if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and do subscribe in case you haven't already. 
and as always i shall see you guys in the next video until then stay safe everyone keep rocking cheers bye bye